For content creators and viewers alike, being a YouTuber, there's quite a lot of misconceptions that surround that topic. Being a YouTuber for many aspiring content creators is a dream that at times may see far out of reach. Looking up there to their idols, their stars, their inspirations, and just imagining for a second what it would be like to live the life of a full-time YouTuber. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I am not a full-time YouTuber. However, I do make a living off YouTube. When I first started out YouTube, I lacked the knowledge foundation that I currently have for having as much time being on this platform that I have. I wanna clear up a few misconceptions. I wanna label things that are true and also clear up all the bollocks in the community. This video is to give you a bit more of a viewer's insight on exactly why YouTubers might actually do something. And as a content creator, it can give you some useful tips and tricks to try on your own videos to allow you to have more exposure, gain more views, likes, subscribes, etc. Yes, if you're an avid absolute beast subscriber, this is not a normal video. However, I will flavor it as if it was any of my normal usual content that you guys enjoy. Now, a bit about me personally, if you're new to the channel, I'm a CrossFit slash, uh, I would say a athlete, I don't know the word for it, but I basically highlight athletes and their achievements as well as I do CrossFit. Now that I've said I've said CrossFit three times, I just put up two, but I've said it three times in the same sentence. You guys definitely know that I'm an avid CrossFitter because if I haven't already told you, I would have already told you. Let's move on. Let's start with topic number one. Now, as a creator, this is by far the most important topic, so take some notes. It is the four T's. Topic, timing, tags, and thumbnail. I'm gonna look at this from the sunk cost fallacy to explain something like creating a video. The sunk cost fallacy goes, individuals commit to the sunk cost fallacy when they continue a behavior or endeavor as a result of a previously invested resource, whether it's time, money, or effort. Basically in layman's terms, if you had a relationship and the only reason you were staying in that relationship was because of how long you spent with that person, you might resent that person, you might hate that person, you might wish you were somewhere else, but because you're like, we've been together for five years, you stay in that relationship. That's not how life works, but that's also not how video making works. Just because you spent 20 hours making, editing, developing, creating, and posting a video, doesn't mean it deserves any more views than anyone else who created a video, including the videos that you make with lower views. That being said, of course, the more effort you put in the video, the better it's going to be, but time does not mean money when it comes to YouTube. It means topic, it means tags, timing, and of course our thumbnails. Let's start off by covering number one, which is topic. Of course, what I'm trying to say doesn't mean you just don't try in your videos. Basically what I said was if you put tons of time in it, you might not get a good video. It is true. Once again, it depends on your topic, it depends on what you're trying to attract, who you're trying to attack, and the content in your exact video. But the topic is also very important when it comes to YouTube. And this is why I personally have spent hours and hours and hours editing a video, thinking that it was gonna be the fucking tip of the iceberg, the best video I've ever created. However, once I've posted that video, it gets something like 20 views and no one watches. Yet, sometimes I've caught myself spending five minutes, if not less, on a video, created and posted it, and it gets over 50,000 views. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's frustrating, confusing, and quite possibly the most annoying thing when it comes to YouTube. But can you actually control how well a video does? Yes. Let's start with the topic. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes the videos you create just won't get the traction it deserves. The less deserving videos will incidentally get more traction and become successful. Ben Bergeron says, the only thing in this world you can truly control is your reaction to a situation. You can control what you think and how you act, but everything else is out of your control. The weather, the traffic, a bird shitting on your head as you walk to work, expect and embrace adversity. This also applies to our video making process. You might put all the effort in, you might have the perfect title, topic, tags, and thumbnail as well, yet your video gets no views. Sometimes you just can't control these things. But if you're consistent on all four, eventually something is going to go your way. Consistency is key, blah, 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 we all get it. 
Let's talk a little bit more about the tea. Topic is going to be dependent on your YouTube channel. Evan always tells me, find a niche and attack. So for me, fitness would be my topic. CrossFit is my niche, specifically no bullshit, honest CrossFit information showcasing CrossFit athletes. So for me, choosing a topic like, we tried the most disgusting protein recipe, yuck, protein shake recipe review, was probably not a good topic to pick. And as you can probably realize, it didn't get many views. It really hurt. I put a lot of effort into that video. A lot. A lot. Whereas, what is the problem with CrossFit? Five things that ruin CrossFit was a much more interesting topic. And even the sound of the title, you can kind of hear why. CrossFit is a fairly popular sport right now. What is the problem with is asking a question to your audience, making them think to themselves, fuck, what is the problem with CrossFit? I wonder. And then the five things that ruin CrossFit get all those haters of CrossFit super hard because they want to confirm their own suspicions. Now, I'm not claiming that this is the best video title of all time. There's, of course, better out there. And the, the way that you structure your title does control exactly how your video is shown on YouTube, recommended, etc. Comes up on your front page, whatever. But being my fifth video on my channel and it gaining over 100,000 views, it makes me think and realize that title is very important especially the topic that your title talks about. But one of the things with this video and why it did so well is also the timing of the video. Timing can be an important factor when it comes to your videos. Specifically, if A, your topic is trending, like currently as of this video, COVID-19 is a trending topic. If your video is about COVID-19, it's probably more likely going to be searched by people. Timing a video can be super effective if that topic fits into your niche. There isn't much point of me releasing a video about how to create a COVID-19 mask when I'm known for fitness content instead. Instead of that, I chose to make videos about workouts, how to do specific workouts with specific gear or the lack of gear during this weird and wonderful time. That obviously did well because a lot of people are searching for workouts now. It was well-timed videos and it provided value, all because I chose the correct time. Let's talk about tags, number three of the T's. Now tags obviously are super important. You probably have watched some other videos of how to gain 100,000 subscribers in a week or how to get 10,000 likes on your video, or how to increase views on your video. And they all come across with the word tags. And it's very annoying because they're not very specific on what to tag. Well, tags are important. They are necessary to gain some traction when it comes to your videos. So if I was to make a video about CrossFit, my tags are always gonna include CrossFit in them. It's just common sense. But once you hit a certain amount of subscribers and consistent viewers, you will see YouTubes with like five tags in their videos. I mean, me personally, I would highly recommend doing tags for any up and coming YouTuber. It just makes sense. It's gonna get your video more likely to be recommended. It will be placed at the end of someone else's video or on that side part for what's up next. It's just gonna be better for your content, especially if you don't have subscribers. I use a free version of vidIQ, which I'm not sponsored by, but this allows me to see other content creators' tags. Yeah, it's kind of like stealing, but it's also idea gaining and you don't own a right to a tag apart from maybe your YouTube channel's name, but it's very odd to put someone else's YouTube channel name in your tag, so. But these are my suggestions for how you should tag your video. A, putting the name of the video in the tag. It just makes sense and it's gonna be very unlikely that there's gonna be another channel with the exact same video title as yours. So it's more likely to pick up more traction on that specific tag alone. Like I mentioned, B will be tagging the topic of your content that you're creating. So for my example, CrossFit being the topic, I would tag CrossFit, maybe CrossFit Games, CrossFit Motivation, and see most importantly, your channel. Tagging your channel at the start might seem useless, but for your subscribers, if they search Absolute Beast, it's more likely that your latest video will be recommended because it's the newest to be posted and it's got your channel tag in it. So it'll be hit to the top. So if they're searching for you or they looked up your Instagram, oh, Absolute Beast posted a new video, can't find it anywhere else, go to YouTube, Absolute Beast, boom, comes up my latest video. So it's just easier for your subscribers and your current viewers to see your content and maybe friends, family members, and people who are searching for you to help find your new content as well. Finally, the most essential part to any YouTube video, the thumbnail. Even though every single how to get more subscribers, viewers, 
likes on your videos, more content created, blah, blah, blah. Videos all just fap all over how good getting a good thumbnail is. They are unfortunately correct. If you were to have a screen grab of your video as the thumbnail to your video, you must be thinking to yourself, why the fuck aren't I getting any more views? But imagine if Marvel used a screen grab for their final poster for their movie, people would be like, what the fuck is this? Even though it's the greatest movie of all time, it's got some like picture of Captain America super blurred in it, kind of being like, end game. Like, you're not gonna click on that video, you're not gonna go to that movie. The thumbnail sells the movie, the thumbnail sells your video. And having a good thumbnail will make your video more likely to attract different viewers. So it's pretty damn important. But I also hear people be like, but Ty, I don't have all that special software to edit and create thumbnails, or I don't know how to edit a thumbnail myself, or I can't take a photo of myself because I don't have a full-time videographer following me around, and I'm only doing it by myself with a, with a tripod and all this kind of stuff. Look, I get it. I don't have a full-time videographer. I had to teach myself how to edit a thumbnail. Uh, it, it can be hard, and I understand. But instead of being like, make a good thumbnail, make sure YouTube video is fucking good. I'm just gonna show you exactly how I make a thumbnail for a video. Let's say, for example, Rich Froning, The Fittest on Earth. Now, now one of my favorite thumbnails I've ever created is the Rich Froning thumbnail for the Rich Froning Fittest on Earth video. I'm gonna be able to show you guys exactly how I made this one within about five to 10 minutes. It's pretty simple. So you wanna create a new file that is 1280 by 720. That's the framework that the YouTube thumbnails work off. From there, I like to open a second one, um, a 1920 by 1080. So a, usually a screen resolution sized uh, picture or uh, yeah, screen resolution sized picture that can help me upload photos or images that I decide to use. But for this video, I won't need it. Then I try and find some content that I'm gonna gain the video from. Now, I'm gonna use some rich phoning content. This is just a video of rich phoning um, and the Torian Pro, great video, but let's just use this screen grab here. From there, I print screen, bring up back to my Photoshop, copy and paste, hit Control T, find a good position for that photo, and then we'll get a bit of Royce in there. Oh no, it's too big. No Royce, see you later Royce. And then from this spot, I'll press OK. So that's going to be my photo. I don't think it looks too bad, but I feel like we can add a little bit to it. Let's add some LUTs. So I'm going to my LUTs. I obviously have some pre-downloaded folders and presets, etc. You can download a lot for free. Just got to find it in the right spot. Peter McKinnon has tons of good ones. From there, let's just click on this one. I like the color. It's a nice blue tinge. That's my style. Let's keep it on that. You can obviously play around with some adjustments, changing brightness, contrast levels, vibrance, etc. For this instance, we might just add a little bit of contrast and then a little bit of brightness and then fix up the vibrance just slightly. Ooh, don't want them too tanned. It's very noticeable otherwise. I think that helps a little bit. Cool. That's going to be the basis of our photo. So now the, uh, the framework of the image is done. Let's add the title. Let's imagine that I am doing the fittest YouTuber on earth, Rich Froning. Let's just add his name. So I like to use the font Oswat. It's uh, just a font that I personally enjoy. You can find your own font, uh, www.font.com. I'm pretty sure fonts, I think it's how you pronounce it. There's millions and millions of fonts to choose from. Find one that works for you. So for this one, we'll type in Rich Froning. It's gonna fit a screen there, but it's all right. We can drag it back on. That's perfect size too. We'll fit it in right there. But you might notice it's a little bit white, slightly bit hard to see behind the greatest man on earth, Rich Froning. Very easy to edit, double click. We wanna add some stroke. So slap on some stroke, a three is a nice one. And then some drop shadow to give it more of a backdrop effect. Click OK, looking pretty good. But to make it just as good as my other one, what I did use is an American flag around the F and the R. Very easy to do on Photoshop as well. All you need is American flag. Just type into Google American flag. I've found this one and I'm gonna drag it on two. I'm gonna go Control T and lower that size a little bit just so it fits into the FR because I think that's the part that looks the best. I don't know what happened there with the flag, but that's okay. And then from there, all you do is you go to layer, create a clipping mask, and there you have it.
a very fitting thumbnail for my rich phoning video that I haven't created out of this time. I hope that helps you guys with the editing software, but remember you don't need these high expensive softwares to create thumbnails. There's tons of free software and even on paint, you can make a fairly good thumbnail. I've seen it done. You just got to find where and just type in free software into Google. If you are looking for some good free software, there is tons out there, but I personally just prefer Photoshop. That's all it is to it. That's how I make a thumbnail. Yeah, there's definitely better people out there who create thumbnails. Yeah. It's not the greatest way to do one, but that's how I do one. Super easy, super simple. And yes, I know you might be like, but I don't own Photoshop. That's okay. We're going to go through some software a little bit later on. So a quick summary of the four T's. Timing can be super important on a video. The more well-timed your video is, the more likely it is to trend, especially if something around your niche is coming out. For example, if I post a video about CrossFit Games, when the CrossFit Games is on, more people are going to be searching for that. It's just common sense. Topic is super important. You could have your topic as something that's a niche part of your video. You can label it any way you want, as long as it's actually what your video is about. Of course, clickbait is a thing. If I'm like, easiest way to get 500,000 subscribers in one day, and then you click on my video and you're kind of like, eh, I already knew all these things. Is it really the easiest way or am I just bluffing? Whereas if I was to be like, these are the best tips that helped me get to 500,000 subscribers. I mean, it's a bit more of an honest, genuine topic title. Obviously tags are important, but don't obsess over them. I use an app like vidIQ to help me find tags and allow me to be able to get the tags that's gonna get my video a bit more exposure. Of course, bigger channels don't need tags, but it does also help if you're a smaller channel with less subscribers to be able to boost your videos, views, and ratings. And the importance of thumbnails is key. Creating a good thumbnail will make your video more likely to be clicked on by people who haven't seen your content before. So keep that in mind. Let's move on to topic number two. Don't forget to subscribe. That's not a joke. That is the topic that we're gonna talk about today. As someone who consumes and creates tons of content on YouTube, this slogan, phrase, if you must, is repeated quite regularly and is almost joked about. Whether it's your favorite creator with over 2 million subscribers or it's an up and coming YouTuber who only has 100 subscribers on the channel, you will hear this phrase time and time again. Subscribers undoubtedly play a massive role in YouTube, but to what point, you might ask? Well, First, let's define exactly what it is to be subscribed. If I was referring to a magazine, you'd be exchanging some sort of a transaction to receive a product. In reference to YouTube, it is very similar. As a subscriber, it is essential that the person has an arrangement with their provider, i.e. their YouTube star, content creator, whatever, to receive content or to A, see more of my videos, B, more recommended or more likely to be recommended with similar like-minded individuals like myself. So example, if you watch my video about CrossFit, you might see Josh Bridges' video about CrossFit. It'll come up on your channel more often, whatever. And C, receiving things like community updates and stories that I post on my channel. And for most of you guys, I'm sure this is pretty common knowledge. However, to a YouTuber like myself, you are mostly A someone who will regularly see my content when it is posted. Why is this important, you might ask? Well, when I post a video, it gives it a boost, an influx of viewers, like and watch time, which are all super important factors when it comes to my videos gaining more traction. Picture it as a regular customer at a cafe. You know that every Tuesday at 9 a.m., Deborah will come into your store and purchase a cappuccino and cake. That's a guarantee a $10 sale for your store. It works the same for YouTubers. Apart from that factor, subscribers are just not as important as people seem to portray them as for an individual video or to make money on that person's channel. A subscriber is almost a safety net for each video you post, guaranteeing the creator a specific amount of views when posted. This is why if you're an up and coming YouTuber, it can be super difficult to get an initial spurt of views on your video or to get your videos with any traction because you don't have that base of fans that are supporting you. Now, this doesn't mean you can't create a trending video or topic, but what it does mean is it's just gonna be a little bit more difficult and it's gonna rely on a few other factors such as topic, 
timing, tags, and thumbnail. Lastly, when it comes to subscribers, I'm just gonna talk about some of the numbers that actually matter. Something that as a YouTuber, you should aim for, or as a avid consumer of YouTube, when to help support your YouTuber get to a certain milestone. Because at a point when you're at PewDiePie's level of 100 million subscribers, what does he gain from these subscribers apart from, as I mentioned, A, concurrent viewers? As a YouTuber, milestones are very common. And you might see videos saying, my first 10 subscribers special, or more commonly, 100,000 and a million subscribers. But apart from that concurred viewership that I mentioned, is there any other benefit to getting this amount? Not really, only if you really enjoy getting the silver and gold play buttons and those kind of things give you a hard on stiffy. The numbers that all up and coming YouTube creators should be aiming for are the graphite stage, which YouTube labels as between one and a thousand subscribers. In that little bit of an area of a zone, there is the hundred subscriber mark which gives you access to creating a custom URL for your channel, making it look less like a Trojan when you send it to your friends or like they're about to get Rick Astley. It's not a big deal, but it definitely does help putting in things like your handle for your Instagram. 1,000 subscribers, which can be arguably the most important number to hit as a content creator, and pretty much every number after this is invalid. Hitting 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time gives you the ability, once approved, to monetize your content, giving you a sense of earning and also putting all those doubt into the haters that said that, oh, you won't make any money off YouTube. Having that 1,000 subscribers also opens you up to two additional things. One, super chat. When you live stream your content, you're able to receive donations similar to things like Twitch and Mixer. And then two, which are for gaming channels, is the ability to join or a membership option, giving your viewers or subscribers the abilities to subscribe to your channel to pay a monthly fee to gain additional benefits. As a normal channel, you don't get this just yet. I'll explain in just a moment. But as a gaming channel, this is a huge, huge deal. You not only get A, money from your videos, but you also get B, a super chat option that gives you donations, and C, an ability for people to join your channel. There's a lot of benefits to being at a thousand subscribers. From there, my opinion, the only other important level to hit is bronze. Bronze now is between 10 to 100,000 subscribers. At the 10,000 subscriber mark, you get access to the ability to advertise merchandise in that bottom part of your video. You might see some of those channels selling mugs and shirts and all that kind of stuff. It just adds another revenue stream for your channel and it gives you the ability to sell your own merchandise, which with YouTube monetization and stuff, which I'll cover a little bit later on, it can be difficult to make money on YouTube. This just allows another stream of revenue for those avid subscribers who really support you. At the 30,000 subscriber mark, as a channel like mine, a fitness channel, we get the access and the ability to have the join button on our channel, which is super important. It is a little bit unfair that it takes us 29,000 more subscribers than the gaming channels, but you need to look at it from a business standpoint. YouTube want gamers to stream. This will help them have more support. And I, to be honest, aren't too mad because I don't think anyone would join my channel anyway. But that's not the point. The point is 30,000 subscribers is my ceiling. If I'm aiming for anything, it's 30,000 because that means that I've pretty much achieved all of the unlockables on YouTube. Apart from that, you get your 100,000 play button, you get your 1 million play button, and you get your 10 million play button, and then PewDiePie got 100 million. So everything after that is not as beneficial, but of course, it's just more of a social dick measuring contest and you don't need to be worried about that. So quick summary of the subscribers. Yes, subscribers are super important for YouTube channels. Whether you're a viewer or you're a creator, being a subscriber or having subscribers is important to a point. It's a safety net for your channel, a safety net for your videos to make sure that you get a concurrent amount of views on that specific video that you release. The more subscribers you have, the higher average your videos will get, the better you'll perform, the more money you're going to make. Of course, subscribers aren't everything. I've created videos that have gotten zero views, even though I have tons of subscribers. 
in accordance to the amount of views that that video made. At the same time, you can almost quadruple the amount of views that you get or subscribers just don't watch it at all. So there's not a reliant factor of your channel, but it is important to have them. And I thank everyone who subscribed to me. Let's cover off topic number three. This is for all you viewers at home. It is the monetization topic. One of the questions I get quite often, not so much by my current followers and subscribers, but people who generally know me is, how much money do you make on YouTube? Or do you make money off YouTube? My answer is, yeah, I do. How much do you make, Tyler? Fuck, all right, I'll tell you, all right? Now, me personally, and as someone who has my personality traits, money is not important to me. And you might be like, oh, everyone says that it's not important to them. Why do you drive a Lexus? I don't drive a Lexus, it's just an example I came up with. But the point behind what I was trying to say is I'm not motivated by money. Neither does the thought of making more money make me motivated. Having money provided by YouTube just gives me the ability to create more high quality content and allow me to purchase, repair, and get software, gear, etc. that I will need. But for the first year and a half that I did YouTube, I didn't make a cent. At the moment, I spend about $100 a month on software. Also, buying all the equipment required to create the kind of content that I wanted to create did cost quite a fair amount of money, upwards of about $5,000. Of course, you don't need any of this to make content. It's just what I decided I wanted, and I put my own money into it because this is a hobby of mine. However, obviously, you've noticed after my subscriber part, I'm over 1,000 subscribers. I get money from YouTube. How much you might ask? Well, let's kind of give you an idea of what kind of money videos make and how CPM works and all that weird fucking shit around money. Obviously with the better content I can create and the money I'm reinvesting in my channel, it's more likely that more people are gonna watch my content. So when an ad views, I get more money. Pretty simple, right? You didn't expect that to come up, did you? Wow, an ad. But this is my point. That ad that you just watched, skipped, whatever. YouTube gets paid 55% of that. I get paid 45% of that. But that still doesn't give you any clarity on how much money I earn. What I get paid is determined on YouTube's playback-based CPM effective cost per mile, or the estimated average gross revenue per thousand playbacks on which an ad was shown, independent of which specific playbacks the advertiser was charged for. Now, currently on my channel, my CPM is 7.18. Money is paid on two different factors generally. One, a view, and two, if they take further action on the ad. For example, click on the ad, buy the product, whatever. So if I make $7.18 per thousand views, then on a video like, for example, my rich phoning, fittest on earth video, I would have technically made $804.16, right? I fucking wish. Currently that video has earned $306. So I'm about $498 short. Did I get scammed? Did I get ripped off? No. Remember exactly what YouTube says. Effective cost per mile or the estimated average gross revenue per thousand playbacks, which an ad was shown independent of which specific playbacks the advertiser was charged for. So because some of you guys just blatantly skipped the ad or some other ones didn't click on it, I didn't get as much money or I maybe didn't get paid at all. YouTube still make their revenue because they viewed the ad, yet I don't receive any of the actual income, which is why there's a bit of a disparity between the two amounts. I'm not miffed, I still got money. Yeah, everyone would be like, 300 bucks for a video, fuck me, Tyler, it's like a week's wage. It's Australian dollars, so it's not really worth that much, but at the same time, it is still a lot of money for making a video. You also need to take into consideration YouTube Premium. Of course, they skip ads entirely, but YouTube actually pays you a percentage of the amount that you would normally get. Because they have Premium, still does mean they avoid the ads, but you get paid for it because they're a Premium member. There's not many premium accounts, so this isn't really a huge factor, but it is still a income nonetheless. So on average per month, I make roughly about $330 to $360. That's Australian dollars. It's not a lot of money, but for someone with the amount of subscribers I have, about 7,000, it's better than nothing. It's also better than not making any money at all. 
But let's talk about if you weren't to make money, that piss stain symbol, the copyright infringement. Fuck me sideways with a silver spoon. There's nothing on this platform that frustrates me more than this stupid ass symbol. I pay over $600 a year for copyright protected music rights. So when I get this symbol for one of my songs that are within these rights, I get a little triggered. Hell, I get fucking pissed. What happens? Good news. It's not a strike to your channel. It's just someone kicking you in the nuts and reminding you for the next 30 days that you may or may not make revenue on the video that you created. You can tell I'm a little triggered. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about this and you can't avoid it. However, escrow, which is another different meaning, means that you have disputed the claim, your payments are withheld until a result is found. I mean, it's kind of good and a bad thing at the same time, but you still have to send proof, documentation, and all this BS because the company that writes your music or copyrights your music cannot detect correctly that you have a license with them. After 30 days, they can just keep all the money if they don't read your fucking email. It's bullshit, but it's all part of being on YouTube, isn't it? Let's quickly summarize YouTube and monetization. It requires a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time on YouTube to be monetized. Of course, your channel still has to be approved at that point. Once that happens, you can start putting ads on all of your videos. There is a catch, however. YouTube have recently updated their system for a self-evaluation before you create a video. This is to stop you if you have swearing, if you have sexually explicit content, and all this other stuff that would usually be frowned upon by advertisers. If you flag it yourself, of course, it will give you the ads that your channel requires. Of course, you can just bullshit it and get past it, but they'll probably find out anyway and then just de-copyright your channel and you get an infringe, but it's not worth it, just be honest. Obviously, you make money on YouTube, but the estimated revenue and how much you think you make or you think someone else makes, depending on the content that they provide. So of course, even though that video got a hundred over 100,000 views, I didn't make over $700, did I? I only made 306. So it's always about estimated revenue. There's a whole big, big like analytics thing you can nerd all over, but ideally I still get paid. I get paid fairly well for the amount of views and content that I create for a subscriber of my level. If you look at obviously bigger subscribers, people like Joe Rogan, PewDiePie, they would make tons more money than me, of course. You can make other money from super chats and joining and obviously merchandise, etc., which I've already covered up top but this was just specifically talking about ad revenue. Hope that clears a few things up for you guys. Let's cover off the final topic, which is software and extras. For any channel to create content or a video, you need to have some sort of a video or film or camera to be able to create the content itself. You need to have a computer, laptop, or phone to edit the content on. You must have internet, obviously, to upload the content. And then finally, uh, depending on the type of channel you have, you must have some sort of an audio, whether it's a microphone, whether it's music, sound, whatever. All these channels can find some form of a combination of these different tools. Now, I use software on my channel to help enhance the content I create. It's not a necessity. You don't need it. It ain't gonna change the world. But what it does is it allows me to edit things smoother give me a bit of a better feel on my channel, whatever it may be. Now, the two major softwares I use is Premiere Pro and Photoshop, the main two. I also use Artlist and Epidemic Sounds for my music. I also use Google Drive to upload my videos too and allow them to also be downloaded onto my phone. Those softwares cost me about $100 a month. Now, of course, for a year and a half, remember, I didn't make any money. So that was $1,500 that just disappeared to the middle of nowhere because I wasn't making money on YouTube, but I still had this content there because it did help me create the content that I wanted to create. You don't need it. There's plenty of free software out there. And if you look hard enough, you can find some really good, if not better software than this type of software to help edit your videos. But for me personally, it just help. Following on from that is having some sort of a color grade to your videos. Once again, another extra. Once again, I'm not an expert in this. If you want to see an expert, go to Peter McKinnon's channel. He talks about this in a little bit more detail, but having his color grades on my channel allow me to make my videos look a little bit better. Here's a bit of an example. This is a video without color grade. 
This is a video with color grade. It's not a necessity, but it just makes it more appealing to the eye. It's just an extra, a little thing that's gonna make your channel better. Confidence. Confidence is a huge thing. Building up confidence in front of a camera is even bigger. When I first started this channel, my confidence was shocking. There was so many cuts in my video that I can't even keep track. I actually got a comment on my video being like, bruh, there's so many cuts and ha ha ha, this was filmed on a water bottle. You're gonna get these comments from time to time, but quality obviously comes with time, practice, etc. Confidence also comes with experience. The more experienced I got with creating videos, the more my videos flowed, the more confident I got in the content I was creating. It just takes time. Your first videos will be a little bit sketchy, a little bit dodgy, Practice, 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 you will get better. The better you get, the less you have to look at a script or you know, pause and stop and forget what you think about and then the more your content will flow, the more people will enjoy it because confidence breeds excellence. Now, one of my favorite clips about confidence is actually by a fellow YouTuber and he made a TikTok. One day of being a YouTuber. Hey guys, one week of being a YouTuber. Yo, what's going on guys? My name's Robohoggy. This is one month of being a YouTuber. <laughs> what is going on guys? My name's Robohoggy. Welcome back to yet another video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe, smash that like. The next extra is haters. Haters is a massive part of YouTube and don't be afraid to have haters. A few haters here and there actually means you're doing the right thing. If you're not getting a relative amount of hate on something, you're obviously not doing it right. So to have haters means there's people who disagree or they don't understand your opinion. They hate, they comment on your video, whatever. Don't respond to them, respond to them. This is once again up to you. Have your own opinion about things, of course, but at the end of the day, if your videos are getting over 70% dislike and you're kind of like getting all these hate comments and stuff, maybe you're probably going into a realm that is not agreeance by all people, but at the same time, if you truly believe in something, obviously follow your passion. Haters are gonna be a part of your YouTube channel. Just don't react, don't blow your fucking head, don't just jump off a cliff and be like, fuck you, screw you, fuck this. Just be calm, if you see it, deep breath, walk away, come back, create a good reply to that person, whether it's right or wrong. On every single YouTube creation video, consistency is the key keeps coming up again and again and again. And unfortunately it is true. The more consistent you are with content, the more likely you're gonna get more subscribers, people who are gonna buy into what you're trying to sell or display or whatever it may be. Consistency in the fact of continuing YouTube no matter what the viewership, no matter how many likes you get on a video, no matter if someone dislikes something or hates on something or no one watches your video. Consistency is the key. It doesn't mean posting Monday and Friday every single week for the entire year. Yeah, that's being consistent, but not consistency. Consistent is a little bit different. I don't really follow that kind of uh, pattern of viewership or videos because sometimes I might spend a lot longer on a specific video. It trails over that particular end date that I had in mind. In my viewer's defense, I'm sorry, but at the same time, I would rather spend that one or two more days on that video to get it right than post an unfinished video that is kind of choppy, ugly, and not great. So if it comes into that kind of like discussion of, oh, should I just try and get it out or rush it out? Or should I just take a few more days, get it refined, make sure it's well, and then post it? I would always choose those few more days every time. Until you become a bigger, more successful channel, and even then you don't really need it, Having those Monday and Friday or those specific days that you post on isn't a necessity, it's a choice. It's being more consistent and giving your viewers a, an idea of what day to be available, not so much uh, making your channel any better. Keep that in mind when you are creating videos. And the final piece of advice that I've come up with is video length. Of course, you hear this all the time, 10 minute videos are golden. The reason why 10 minute videos are golden is because it's more likely that a person is going to consume a percentage of your content. If I was to consume 20% of a 10 minute video, that's gonna be two minutes. YouTube sees that and it's like, it's people watching two minutes of his video. I'm gonna re-recommend it. Whereas if I was like, cool, I make a five minute video and I only watch 20% of it, that's one minute. YouTube are like, ooh, one minute, not enough time for ads. My advertisers won't like that. I'm not gonna re-recommend that video. 
There's no exact golden amount that's gonna help your video be better, but they say that the 10 minute range, 10 to 15 is pretty good because it gives you a higher chance of having people watch longer of your video on average. The sad truth is not everyone is gonna watch your entire video. Try and get your most important content out within the first two to three minutes. And then from there, continue the video as normal, but just don't expect everyone to make it to the end. And that's pretty much it. I hope I gave you guys some insight into the world of a creator or the world of a viewer when it comes to YouTube. I hope you gain some useful tips and valuable tricks to help edit, create, post, and gain more traction on YouTube. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you haven't. And I want you guys to keep in mind this factor moving into the future. Manually saving your videos. Every minute I manually save my video because so many times in the past, I got a video all the way 30 minutes in creating this badass content and then it crashes. I lose 30 minutes of my video and I'm fucking pissed. Make sure you always save your video. If there's someone who you think is an up and coming YouTube creator or could use this content, share it with them now. Otherwise, comment down below on any other tips and tricks you guys want. Or even just send me a private message on Instagram. I might be able to help you out with some of your YouTube questions. Otherwise, without further ado, I hope you guys stay a beast. But like I say, man. Always said it. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey. Ain't nothing changed but the weather.